Hello, in this video we'll be going over how to select a projector for your home theater. Uh, this is going to be a rather long video uh, going over a ton of topics uh, such as good resources for finding a projector, different types of projectors, the technology behind uh, different types of projectors, as well as considerations you need to make for your room and what you need to prioritize when you select a projector for your use case. And finally, some recommendations on projectors you can get at specific price points and use cases. So ton of content here. There's going to be timestamps below, so you can just jump to whichever section you're interested in or jump all the way to the end to just see my recommendations for projectors. And this is content uh, current as of January 2024. So if you're seeing this uh, several months or a couple years from now, obviously some of the recommendations will be outdated, but the underlying content should still be uh, very applicable. So jumping right in, I uh, just want to review uh, some really good resources for researching projectors. The top two would actually be uh, Projector Central and ProjectorReviews.com. Uh, that's where you would go for information on uh, any projector you're interested in or just want to learn more about, as well as reviews on them. Uh, there's tons of people on YouTube and other places online and also a lot of newspapers and other periodicals that claim to do projector reviews. Most of them are pretty pointless, quite honestly. If they don't have a background in being able to do proper calibration or measurements, um, or really, you know, a video background in general, they, they really don't have a leg to stand on as far as, uh, you know, reviewing and, you know, doing proper re projector recommendations. Um, unfortunately, a lot of these uh, YouTube reviewers, they're just going to get, uh, you know, a projector from some random Chinese company, they'll turn it on, be like, hey, yeah, the image is good, and then they'll put some flowery language and videography around that. So, really want to stick to some reputable sources here. Projector Central, um, you know, they've been around forever. They're, you know, pretty much the most extensive database on the internet for, uh, you know, projectors for, you know, any real product category really uh, within projectors. Um, this is just an example of a page, their spec sheet for the uh, Epson LS 1200. You can see all the specs for it as well as, you know, this particular projector is a laser projector, but if you had a bulb based projector, they also have great links and resources to finding, you know, replacement parts such as the bulb, the filter, etc. As well as, uh, you know, this is their spec page, but they also link over to uh, their reviews where, you know, for example, on the LS 12,000, you know, they have like, you know, the various categories for their reviews and then, you know, measurements on the projector, stuff like that, as well as, you know, their conclusions. And, you know, of course, in their top 10, their ranking list for projectors at certain price points, as well as use cases. I'll have my own recommendations at the end. I don't always agree specifically with projector uh, central's recommendations for, you know, each top pr uh, price point and projector. But, you know, honestly, like if you just go blindly with their recommendations, you're not going to get a bad projector. It's just that, you know, my opinion on like, you know, the minor nuances might slightly disagree with theirs, but you know, that's really coming in to, at a, like, you know, the, the rounding error, like, you know, really just splitting hairs there. So, uh, if you just follow their recommendations blindly, you, you don't really, you know, end up in a bad place. Uh, similarly, uh, projectorreviews.com, another great website. Uh, you know, their reviews, uh, they don't have the database that Projector Central has, but their reviews are slightly more on the technical side. So if you really want to get into the nitty gritty, they have that there. This is just, you know, their roundup of their favorite projectors for 2024. You can see here and then an example of a review from, uh, you know, from projectorreviews.com. This is for the NC9, which is, you know, JVC's like, uh, I guess, top of the line for consumer range uh, home theater projectors is a $2,300 model, $23,000 model, sorry. And then, uh, yeah, so the other link I had here was uh, Value Electronics. Uh, they're actually a retailer, but every few years they do a projector shootout and roundup. So the interesting thing about this, so here I have a screen cap of the results here for the most recent one from 2022, uh, but you can also go to straight to their website. All you need to do is Google Value Electronics projector shootout. The first result will be this. It's like halfway down the page. They have the results for, you know, the most commonly used projector or commonly recommended projectors as well as evaluations in each category. The important thing about this is that Value Electronics, when they did this projector shootout, it was in 2022. They actually rented out like a whole like ballroom uh, venue center in New York City, invited over like several industry experts. I think there was like, you know, 10 to 12 experts there, you know, people ranging from people who worked in like, you know, um, display tech R&D, as well as people who work on like the production side in Hollywood, um, you know, just industry experts from various categories that had to do with the, you know, everything around, you know, video 
and content production as well as the technology side and had them evaluate each of these projectors in a blind setting uh, against the mastering monitor and then rate them in each category. When I say blind setting, like they didn't know which projector they were evaluating, not that they were blindfolded, obviously. So like they saw an image from the projector, they saw a mastering monitor, and then they were comparing those images against each projector as well as the mastering monitor, which would be their reference. And that allows them to, you know, have a very clear idea of, you know, how each projector rates against each other and allows them to score it without knowing uh, which projector they're evaluating. So in a very, as close to objective sense as you can, like anyone who's involved in research knows that there's no such thing as you know, true objectivity in any of this, but this gets pretty dang close. Uh, and then I uh, just want to uh, you know hit on one point here. I didn't know where else to put this in this presentation, but projector uh, release cycles, they're very different from TVs. TVs, like there's always something coming out this year, next year, year after, and prices are constantly drop, dropping throughout the year. The prices this month are not the same as prices next month. Projectors don't work like that. There's not like a refresh cycle every single year, at least for the reputable brands like Sony, JVC, Epson. Uh, at this point, they've all kind of converged on a three-year release cycle. Like, you know, it was mostly just JVC and uh, Epson before, but now Sony's kind of sync synced up with this cycle as well. So, you know, they had new projectors in 2016, then three years later in 2019, and then two years ago in 2022. So that stands to reason, if we're following this pattern, the next round of projector releases will be mid-2025. So we're almost pretty much smack dab in the middle of the current projector cycle. So if you're planning to get a projector right now, uh, you know, you have nothing to be concerned about. Like, you know, if you're looking at like an Epson LS 1200, sorry, 12,000, and you're like, hey, this projector is over a year old. Like, you know, there is there going to be a new one coming out next month? Should I not buy now? It's like, no, they, they don't work like that. Like, realistically you have a full 18 months before anything new is coming out and even when it does like you don't know whether that's gonna be a major refresh or just a refinement or you know something like that uh, so uh, you know if you happen to be watching this video you know a year from now in early 2025 maybe you should wait a little bit and see what's around the corner but you know anything that you're buying right now it's gonna be good for at least the next year and a half it's not going to be released uh, replaced and even when it is replaced it's not going to be like you know your projector is obsolete overnight it's you know it's still going to be a fantastic projector every bit as good as what you're buying today so you know just keep that in mind so this next section uh we're going to briefly review the uh, three major categories of types of projectors that you would use in a home uh the first what we're all familiar with standard turret throw projectors this is what you think of as like in home theaters or in movie theaters where there's a projector in the back of the room casting a long throw image or you know standard throw image uh to the front of the room to a big screen there uh pretty self-explanatory and then the final one that you see ultra short throw projector that's actually one that you know probably the second most common in the industry right now you might have seen examples of it where at the front of the room you have a screen and then right underneath the screen you have like a credenza or media cabinet and sitting on top of that you have this uh you know projector here that shoots an image up toward the screen is ultra short throw because you know you're several inches away from the screen rather than several feet and you know that's casting an image a lot of people like this idea simply because it seems like you know closest to a tv where you're still getting a massive image while everything is like consolidated to the front of the room uh, i'm not particularly the biggest fan of this solution i'll explain why in a moment uh, but it is a very popular solution these days and then the one in the middle short throw uh, this is actually the category in between a lot of people confuse short throw with ultra short throw just simply because ultra short throw is a lot more popular these days but short throw projectors under the right circumstances can be a great solution because instead of, you know, if you have a room restriction where, you know, you, do, you can't do like a super long throw, you don't have like 10 feet or 12 feet or, you know, 15 feet of clearance to throw an image. As you can see from this picture, this the projector only needs to be mounted three or four feet away from the screen and you can mount it to the ceiling so it's up and out of the way. There is much less likelihood of someone walking in front of the projector and blocking the image. It's... A nice in-between solution, I think. The The only issue really is that there's not very many projectors to select from this category. It tends to not be a very popular category these days. Most of the focus has been on standard throw or ultra short throw projectors. But keep in mind that that is a solution that can work out for some people. Right, so I mentioned before, I don't necessarily like ultra short throw projectors. I'm going to briefly go over why. Uh, so for anyone who happens to have an ultra short throw projector, this is not me saying that your projector purchase was wrong or that your projector is bad. I just have multiple issues that prevent me from personally recommending them or using them myself. 
And it's always possible that someone will, you know, listen, hear me out on my objections to ultra short throw and decide anyway that it still works out for them in their room. So keep that in mind. So the first point I want to make is that, um, you know, ultra short throw, I see it as like, you know, it's marketed as a great like in between solution where you get the massive image, but you don't need the whole like projector setup. It like basically works like a TV. Um, the detraction from that really is that you kind of get like all of the uh, drawbacks of uh, projection without a lot of the benefits of a TV. For example, TVs can get a lot brighter and have a lot better contrast. And uh, it used to be that TVs couldn't get very large, but as you can see from my first point, 85 inch to 100 inch TVs, uh, they're getting a lot, uh, lot uh, cheaper very quickly. You can get pretty decent 85 inch TVs now starting at around $2,000 for something like a Sony uh, X90L or TCL uh, QM8, as well as you know some OLEDs starting around $3,000, $3,500. And then for 100 inch TVs, uh, they're getting down to about five grand now. So that's uh, something to keep in mind that uh, TVs are getting bigger and cheaper all the time. And for people who really, there used to be, it seems like that what people actually wanted was a big TV. And this is just a compromise solution for it. But now that you can actually get big TVs, you may not need to compromise necessarily with projection. So if you're in that 100 inch range, you should really think twice about whether you want the TV or the projector. Uh, the other thing to consider is that projectors are not just the cost of the projector alone. The screens can be quite expensive. When you're using just a standard white screen, it can be quite affordable in the couple hundred dollar range. But oftentimes people want to put ultra short throw in like a living room or another highlight environment. And in those situations, you need to buy a ambient light rejecting screen. And decent ones can run anywhere from like, you know, eleven hundred, twelve hundred dollars at the very cheapest to easily a couple thousand, maybe even more. Uh, so, you know, the more technical your screen needs to get, like if it's not just a standard white screen and it needs to, more is expected from it, such as, you know, rejecting overhead lights or rejecting sunlight from the windows, it gets much more expensive very quickly. As I said, we're going from a couple hundred dollars to a couple thousand dollars very quickly for just the screen alone. And you need to account for that in your overall budget. It's not just the three or four thousand dollar projector. It's another fifteen hundred to two, two grand for the screen. Uh, and then the next one is positioning and horizontal and vertical throw. As you can see here, uh, you know, this image, I included it here on purpose because I wanted to highlight that all the marketing images around projections, such as this one, are a complete fiction. Um, I mean, I don't know how else to say it except for they're lying to the consumers when they show them an image like this. Uh, you'll never see in the real world an ultra short throw projector placed like this. I think a lot of people at this point, they're kind of aware that there is horizontal throw involved. Like you can't just put the projector right up against the wall. It needs to be pulled out a bit, even for ultra short throw. So like to cast a hundred inch image, oftentimes the projector needs to be about a foot away from the wall. And if you want to cast like a 120 inch image, you're all sometimes you know, 15 inches, maybe even 18 inches away from the wall. So your projector and credenza can't be right up against the wall. You start to pull it out into the room. There's a big, there's like a sizable gap between the wall and your media console. And then a lot of people, uh, they may have uh, done the ultra short throw route because they were trying to compromise with a spouse or with other family members in the house. And now the family members that they were trying to accommodate are actually not even happy with this solution anymore because they're seeing this uh, media console out in the room. This is something I want to try to make people cognizant about. Um, <laughs> we're getting out of the realm of like home theater and technology more into just like regular life stuff. But, uh, you know, you have to pick and choose and make compromises that are actually worth it. Um, you know, you're like, you know, if you have a relationship with someone who doesn't like seeing this tech in the room, uh, don't make don't necessarily make a compromise that uh, makes you unhappy and then also doesn't fit the aesthetic needs of the other individual. You kind of need to pick a camp and stick with it. Are you going to do something that actually meets the aesthetic and lifestyle choices and preferences of other individuals in the house? Or are you going to actually make something that is effective as a home theater? Obviously, there's compromises in between, but try to make sure you're actually picking a compromise that suits both parties and rather than a compromise that like both parties dislike because... Plenty of people kind of talk themselves into making a compromise that actually no one likes. And despite the common saying about that, that's actually not the way that that works. You can figure out how to make a compromise that everyone likes. And oftentimes they just don't see ultra short throw projectors as being one of those. And then finally, um, you know, this 
kind of goes into the topic I was mentioning before, but speaker placement, uh, you know, a lot of people, I saw, I assume if they're using an ultra short throw projector, they're also interested in, you know, proper surround sound with independent speakers and subwoofers An ultra short throw projector automatically eliminates almost any possibility of a decent center channel placement. So you're either going to go without a center channel or you're going to go with an awful center channel placement. Um, and in my opinion, awful center channel placement is worse than no center channel at all. So you also you often end up with like either a center channel on the ground or literally mounted to a ceiling. Both of those solutions are awful in my opinion. Uh, the issue is um, you can't put a center channel behind the screen. There are a handful of screens out there that are both ambient light rejecting and acoustically transparent, but they're very, very expensive and very, very compromised. So you're spending a lot for a on, honestly subpar solution. Um, you know, once you account for a vertical throw and horizontal throw of the projector and where you need to place it, your 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 um, your uh, speaker can't go right underneath the screen. Uh, and that just occurred to me, uh, apologies, I forgot to mention one of the most uh, pertinent issues with the projector uh, placement in this situation, which I didn't touch on, which is vertical throw. As I mentioned, everyone knows about uh, horizontal throw, but the vertical throw issue is even more of an issue. As I said, this image is a fiction. Uh, you'll never have the projector right below the screen like this. The projector also needs space above the screen before it can actually cast the image. From the top of the projector to the bottom of the screen is often going to be seven, eight, nine inches. And, you know, that distance increases the larger you need to make the image. So, you know, this screen isn't going to be right here. It's going to be almost touching the ceiling. Like the, the image is going to start here. The bottom of the image is going to be here. And then the top of the image is almost going to be on the wall, on the ceiling. Uh, so you're, a lot of people are surprised. They put the projector on a credenza and then they shoot the image and they want the image to be right above the projector. That doesn't work like that. Oftentimes their image ends up being way higher on the wall than they wanted it to be because they weren't accounting for vertical throw because a, no one warned them about it. B, they were lied to by the marketing and all the images and C, they just didn't do their research. I mean, that information is available if you dig for it, but unfortunately the projector companies do make it like not front and center, the fact that you do need to account for a vertical throw with projection. So that's, uh, <laughs> that was a bit of a bummer of a section. Um, you know, as I said, uh, ultra short throw can still be a great solution for some people. I just want them to do their research first and really consider whether they actually want ultra short throw or whether they just really wanted a big TV in the first place or whether they want to put proper projection in. Because if you have a light controlled, uh, dedicated room, there's really no reason to go ultra short throw. You're, you're dealing with a lot of compromises that you don't necessarily need to that uh, standard throw projection can handle much better. So jumping into uh, the tech behind projectors, the reason I wanted to touch on this category real quick is that people often confuse these two uh, columns here. What we have here is the tech that creates the image and then the tech that produces the light in a projector. And the reason I highlighted this is because people use this throw around this word laser a lot as if that's supposed to describe whether a projector is good or bad. Like, oh, this is a laser projector. It's brand new. It's the hot new sexy thing. It's like that doesn't really tell you anything about the image. All it does is, uh, you know, the laser is a source of light. It's what lights up the image. But the actual image is created by an entirely separate technology. So broadly speaking, the you know major types of technology behind how an image is created is DLP. You'll see this in a lot of uh, I don't want to call them budget projectors, but you know, more affordable projectors, anything in like, you know, the $5,000 range and below all your Optomas, all your Ben Q's, your LG projectors, they all use, you know, the standard DLP chip. Most of them at a time they're using an off the shelf produce uh, solution produced by Texas instruments. And just because it's off the shelf doesn't mean it's necessarily bad. I'm just saying that a lot of these projectors, they're honestly just like repackaging the same technology over and over again. And that's just something to keep in, you know, keep in context with that. Uh, the next is LCD. This is, uh, you know, the technology that Epson is using where, you know, you have your LCD chip and then the light source is shining through it and creating the image that way. Uh, IDLA, uh, that's uh, JVC's technology. And then the last one, liquid crystal on silicon. That's the technology that uh, Sony uses. Uh, the reasons I bring this up is because uh, in the price points, most people like to play at, which is somewhere between $1,000 and $6,000. DLP is, uh, you know, overwhelmingly dominating, but that is not necessarily because it's a superior technology. That just that it's a very accessible technology. Um, I personally have a preference for LCDs, uh, three chip LCD tech. Or sorry, for Epson's three chip LCD technology. Uh, it just, uh, in my experience, provides a much, you know, much better contrast image. Um, much better dynamic range, um, better black levels, which is hugely important for projectors. 
Um, and then similarly in the price ranges above that, um, JVC, uh, their I, sorry, their DLA, DILA technology uh, provides very, very good black levels, even better than Epson's. Pretty much generally considered throughout the industry that JVC has the best black, black levels, best contrast, all that jazz. Uh, so, you know, just to highlight, these are the technologies behind what creates the image in the projector, whereas something such as a lamp or a bulb or a laser or an LED, all that describes is the how the projector is producing light to light up that image. I mean, main benefit here is like lamps and bulbs have been around forever. Uh, that technology is like a couple decades old, very mature, uh, very reliable. Um, they're easy to replace when they go out, but you know, of course, the con here is that you do have to replace them about once, roughly every three thousand to four thousand hours of use. You test to take out the old bulbs, swap the new one in, and you're good to go. Laser and LED are a bit newer on the market. They last twenty thousand hours instead of four thousand hours. You don't need to replace them nearly as often. The downside, of course, is that for the current crop of projectors that are out, there is no real good way of replacing them. So after twenty thousand hours, your projector is essentially kaput. Uh, some people, you know, don't necessarily care about that because 20,000 hours, that's like, you know, probably for most people, 10 to 15 years of use. Once the projector is 10 to 15 years old, do you care that you can't replace the light source anymore? Most likely not really. So it's not a realistic concern. Uh, the flip side, though, is that you got to be careful. Um, don't, as I said, laser has been used as a marketing term now. Don't necessarily assume that the laser projector is better, especially when you're talking about DLP versus LCD projectors. I've seen a lot of times where at a similar price, you can get a, either get a DLP projector with a laser light source, or you can get an LCD projector that uses the bulb. And projectors are marketed on that laser and how much better it is, when in reality, the LCD projector that uses the bulb is actually producing a better image. The only downside is that it uses a bulb as a source. I mean, do you consider that a big deal if the projector is actually producing a better image at the end of the day? I would personally take the better image now, rather than just like, you know, having that warm, fuzzy feeling of knowing that my projector runs on a laser. Uh, so just don't fall for the marketing. Uh, you know, laser just means that it uses a laser light source. It doesn't automatically mean it's better. As I said, if you want a review on a projector, go to Projector Central or Projector Reviews. Look at the actual reviews. Don't deal with marketing terms. Right. Uh, so... Uh, this is the next thing to consider. Projectors are part of a larger system. They're not like a TV. A TV is a full, complete product. It lives or dies on its own merits. I mean, obviously, if you put a TV in a black room versus putting a TV in a bright area, you'll see differences there, and you can evaluate them differently on that. But ultimately, you know, a TV's image quality is a TV's image quality, whereas a projector, you can either make you know a $2,000 projector look fantastic in a properly light-controlled room with proper paint on the walls and proper like you know surroundings, or you can make a $20,000 projector look like garbage by shooting it directly onto a pure white wall, no proper screen, you know, the windows are open, all that jazz. So if you really want to get the most out of a projector, you need to look at your room, not just the projector. So what that means, first, light control. For ideal results with a projector, you know, make sure that you have a room that you have control over the light access in it. So like drapes on the walls and curtains, sorry, drapes on the windows. Um, you know, being able to block light from other rooms, being able to like turn off the lights in this room, that's pretty obvious. Uh, and then on the uh, wall that the projector is on, people are unaware of this, but you can make a massive difference in the performance of a projector. And I'm talking about, like, as I said, the analogy before, a $1,000 projector, sorry, $2,000 projector versus a $20,000 projector. You can make the $2,000 one look better when you put it on a wall where, sorry, when the, the screen that the wall is on either has black paint or gray or a gray paint. These are the two paints I recommend. Uh, Sherwin Williams Tricorn Black if you're using black, or if you're using a gray paint, one of the S, uh, Sherwin Williams 7000 series paints. Uh, if you Google those uh, codes uh, SW7071 and those like you know seven paints in that series, uh, those are all fantastic options. Tricorn Black would be the ideal, but I understand not everyone wants a black room. And then the even better option would be doing black velvet. Um, you know, Sci Fabrics Triple Crush Back. That's a, uh, sorry, Triple Plush. Uh, that's the, uh, you know, common uh, recommendation on AVS Forum. That's because it's a great combination of being very effective for light absorption as well as being, you know, very affordable. And then, you know, there are higher quality options such as, you know, Seymour's Fidelio Black Velvet as well as their Millibel. I think Millibel is their acoustically transparent option. So, you know, keep all those options in mind. Um, you know, Velvet is the best. You know, a tier below that would be black paint and a tier below that would be gray paint. But all three of those options are 
heads and tails like i can't tell you how much better that is than just having your screen mounted on a pure white wall or a cream wall or a yellow wall or any light color like it's i'm telling you it's the difference between as i said it, i'm not even exaggerating here a twenty thousand dollar projector versus a two thousand dollar projector the two thousand dollar projector on the right screen in the right room will look better than the tw projector that costs 20 grand and as i just mentioned last point I mean, if you're just using a projector in a light-controlled room, you don't need anything fancy. A proper white screen that costs a couple hundred dollars is good enough. As I said, for more particular use cases, you'll need a higher tech screen than that. But just having a screen at all is going to be miles better than people who try to reinvent the wheel with creative solutions like you know shooting it onto a white wall or using quote-unquote projector paint. It, it, that's like I've I've tried them. They're interesting creative solutions in search of a problem painted on projector screens they're not they don't compare to an actual screen and oftentimes they're not even cheaper so i would just would not deal with them so what to prioritize <laughs> apologies what to prioritize when it comes to projectors uh the biggest thing here need to remember resolution is not king we use it uh i mean honestly it, it is important like when you're talking about like a 120 inch or 130 inch screen yeah resolution matters like you want like you will see a difference between 4k and 1080p but is it the most important thing in the world absolutely not uh it's something that is easy to market like hey this is a 4k projector but the best 1080p projectors in the world are going to be so much better to look at than like cheap 10 4k projectors like you can go on amazon which i'll cover in a moment and find like 200 dollar projectors that claim to be 4k that doesn't mean that they're any good that just means that they shoot a lot of pixels on the screen uh, so what do you actually need to pay attention to? We call these the three C's. They're contrast, color, and clarity, and it's in that order, which is important to remember. Contrast is king, not resolution. Uh, you know, this is how our eyes uh, evolved to recognize images and to understand what we're looking at. Like the combination of how our eyes and our brain interact with each other is entirely based, maximally weighted toward contrast. So that means that, you know, we're drawn to, you know, see an image as better when it has really good black levels, when we are able to see those differences between light and dark in a scene. And as I just mentioned, this is how our eyes evolved. We have rods and cones in our eyes. Uh, the, uh, if I remember correctly, the rods are what allow us to perceive motion as well as uh, the difference between dark and light, essentially contrast. And then the, the cones are what allow us to perceive color, sharpness, things like that. The thing is, we have 10 times more rods in our eyes than cones. I think it's somewhere around like 95 million rods and like 5 million cones in our eyes. So our eyes are heavily biased toward uh, understanding and interpreting um, contrast, the difference between lightness and darkness in an image, as well as motion, because that's what our evolution has prioritized. So that's why contrast is much more important than these other categories here. And then second would be color. So you know, a projector with good colors that can go in two different ways. And obviously the best ones will do both of them great. So there's color accuracy, how, how well a projector can represent specific colors. And, you know, this can be fixed with calibration, but you know, it would always help to have a projector that has great out of the box color accuracy because not everyone can pay for a proper calibration. And then uh, there's coverage, being able to cover a wider part of the color spectrum, which is becoming increasingly important these days as, you know, more people want to be able to do, you know, HDR, um, you know, in their home theater along with 4K. And then the last one will be clarity. Uh, that's where we're talking about, you know, resolution and sharpness. And as I said, like, you know, f having a 4K experience, is, it's not unimportant. I'm just trying to say it's not the most important thing in the world. And honestly, every projector I'm going to recommend today is capable of doing 4K. Some of them are not native 4K projectors. What they do is 1080p pixel shifting to achieve, you know, a 4K-esque image. Uh, but what I'm trying to say with that is that at lower price points, you'll have to compromise maybe a little bit on that maximal resolution in order to be much, much better on contrast and color, which ultimately is much more important to image reproduction than just, you know, resolution, which is really just counting up the number of rows and columns of pixels that you have on the screen that's honestly not what people care about most when it comes to seeing an image and seeing how lifelike it is and then finally just want to reiterate um you know a projector is a piece of technology but one of the most important things in it is the actual lens itself the glass in it and glass you know as other technology keeps getting better and cheaper glass is a physical manufactured good that 
really doesn't uh, scale in price and performance the same way. It's still incredibly expensive to get good quality glass, good quality lenses. If you look at DSLR cameras, like the bodies keep getting better and cheaper, the lenses stay the same price. You ultimately, you can easily get in a situation as a professional photographer for a videographer where your lens collection costs twice, three times, four times, five times as much as your actual camera does. And the same thing is too with projectors. Uh, the better projectors have better quality glass and that balloons the price massively, you know, in the couple hundred, couple thousand dollar range, whether it's like an Epson or Optoma projector or BenQ, um, you know, the lens is affixed to the projector. But as you go into the price ranges above that, you ultimately may end up in a uh, situation where your uh, lens is a separate purchase, which is easily the same cost, if not more than the projector. So just keep that in mind for your budget. If you're doing, you know, more premium home theaters. So this is a uh, topic I want to hit on real quick, which is just projectors on Amazon. Obviously, I'm not talking about name brands. Like, you know, you will see some, you know, Sony or some Epson projectors there. But like when you see random brand names that you've never heard of on Amazon, you can pretty much immediately, um, you know, eliminate them from consideration. Almost all of these are universally garbage. They lie about their specs. Uh, they're not the same resolution they claim to be. They're not the same light output they claim to be. Uh, it's just not worth considering. Um, you know, as I mentioned before, if the projector is not on Projector Central's database, uh, it's effectively not worth considering. If it's not here, it's just a piece of crap, a fly-by-night company that is not making anything even worth the severely, severely, you know, cheap prices you see here, like seventy dollars, eighty dollars, two hundred, three hundred dollars. Like all of them are garbage. It's just not even worth considering. I'm sorry, like I just have no exceptions to this it's just easier to just be like just don't don't even bother acknowledging these they're the reviews are fake the specs are fake everything about them is fake they're just a piece of crap they're manufactured east way waste end of story so uh i'm sure a lot of you are aware um you know projector light output is measured in lumens uh you know on the topic we had before about uh, Amazon projectors, you know, most of them are just completely lying about their lumen output. But even for name brand, very reputable projectors, uh, you need to be very careful in understanding how much light they actually output in the real world. First of all, what we have here is ANSI, ANSI lumens versus, you know, each company doing their own proprietary measurement. Most reputable country companies, they have their ANSI lumen rating, you know, Epson, JVC, Sony, they'll all be pretty straightforward about what their ANSI lumen rating is. And then the issue is, though, um, oftentimes, you know, at the end of the day, they're trying to show their projector in their best light. So they'll have like a vivid or a torch mode or a dynamic mode or whatever they want to call it that has the maximum light output at the detriment of everything else. Like color accuracy goes out the window like the, the like you're basically looking at a bunch of Smurfs on screen because of how blue or how green the image is because they just want to get the maximum light output rating versus, you know, what they can advertise. So when you, like the uh, image on the uh, right is a perfect example of this. This is the Epson LS12000, which is a fantastic projector, by the way. This isn't actually a uh, condemnation of the projector at all. I'm just using this as an illustrative example where in the marketing, they advertise it as having 27,000 lumen output, 2,700, sorry. And you can see in its dynamic mode, it reaches very, very close to that. It goes around 25, you can essentially round this up to 2,600. So it is actually reaching its rated dynamic output. The thing is this dynamic mode is awful. You don't actually want to use that. That's horribly color inaccurate. Uh, what you actually want to use is one of these other modes, either natural cinema or bright cinema. So if you give them the benefit of the doubt, you know, bright cinema and natural are around 1400 and projector central, their measurement, you know, parameters are slightly different. I think on projectorreviews.com they measured it around the 1600 area. So, you know, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. Say it's like actually 1600 lumens in a, in an actual decent color accurate mode. You might be able to squeeze a bit more out of it with manual calibration, but it's going to be around that 16, 1700 range. But keep in mind that that's 16, 1700 in a real world circumstance versus the 22700 it advertises. So even though this, you know, Epson is not necessarily lying, um, you need to dig a little bit deeper to find what it's truly capable of, which isn't like that full 2700 when you're actually using it in a mode that you'd want to for watching movies. Um, and that might seem egregious on Epson's side, but actually I've seen examples of this where it's even worse. So like, for example, Optoma, um, their color accurate modes are straight up half the light output of what their rated is. When you see an Optoma projector that's rated at 3000 lumen output, uh, realistically, you, you'd expect to get about 1500 lumens from that in a, in a real world use case. 
And then other companies, like I think uh, JVC and Sony are probably the closest. They get within like 85 to 90% of what their rated output is in a pretty color accurate mode. So oftentimes you'll end up in a situation where a 2000 lumen output Sony projector is actually more color accurate and brighter with more light output than a 4000 lumen output optoma projector so just keep in mind lumens isn't lumens matter but they matter in that you need to actually dig in find proper measurements and find what the real lumen output is just reading a spec sheet and saying that oh this one is 4000 lumens and this one is 2000 lumens that doesn't really tell you anything useful it doesn't mean that the 4000 lumen projector is brighter even so other things to keep in mind, um, you know, you lose light output at a longer throw. So projectors always have a throw range where like say for a 120 inch screen, you can either put it as close as 10 feet away or as far away as tw uh, 15 feet away. When you put it closer at like 10 feet away, uh, whatever its closest throw range is, the, pro the light will be brighter than when it's further away. And uh, Projector Central will have, um, you know, they'll have uh, resources for all this uh, as far as calculating the rough light output you will get at a certain distance. Uh, and then another option, I'll put a link below, Audio Advice's home theater design tool. They also have an estimate of the amount of a light output there will be at a particular distance for a particular model of projector. Uh, the other thing is you lose light output in eco mode. This seems pretty obvious for most people. The lower power you use, the less light out output you'll have. So projectors, projectors, they'll have an eco mode. They'll also have like a low, medium, high mode. Sometimes the lowest mode, it'll extend the life of the bulb and the projector will lower the power consumption, but your image will be dimmer as a result. So just keep that in mind. And then for any projector, even for lasers, you lose light output over time. It slowly degrades the light output. So I, I'm most familiar with Epson bulbs and projectors where the Epson bulbs are rated for 3,500 hours. But really, after about 2,000 hours, you've lost about roughly half the life uh, the light output from it. It still means that it's quite use usable, and actually, oftentimes you don't even notice because you're what you're noticing is a slowly degrading brightness output over time. Which you know, it's like boiling a frog; you don't notice because it's not happening all at once. So you kind of get used to it after a while. But then, when you swap out the bulb for a brand new one, you're like, "Oh wow, that is." way brighter. <laughs> it's actually a nice experience, actually, it's, uh, being able to see uh, everything go back to new after just spending like 120 bucks on a new bulb. Whereas, you know, if you have a laser projector after, you know, three, 4,000 hours, the laser is getting dimmer, but you have really nothing to fix it. You can't just, you know, as I said, with a bulb, you just swap in a new $120 bulb with a laser. What are you going to do? You can't, you can't do anything. It's just slowly degrading over time and then the projector dies eventually. So just keep that in mind. Uh, obviously lasers last a lot longer, so it's going to take a lot longer to get to that point, but it does happen eventually. All right. So this is the most, uh, <laughs> what we call nerdy part of the, uh, part of the section here, which is, uh, you know, all these terms for a light output, uh, you know, you'll, you'll hear a lot of these thrown around lumens, nits, foot lamberts, uh, Essentially, what I'm trying to demonstrate here is like we talked about like lumen light output, like, you know, 1500 lumens or 2000 lumens. That's all nerd crap, right? Like, what does that actually mean for the image I want to get? Uh, so just a really simple way of putting this lumens is a measure for the light that's being shot out of the projector. That's what the projector is outputting. And then nits and foot lamberts is the light that's ending up on your screen. And that is dependent on two things. One, it's dependent on the amount of lumens coming out of the projector, but two, it's also dependent on the size and type of screen you're using because you can think of it as spreading bread, butter over bread. No matter what, you have the same amount of butter, but that butter will be spread thinner on a regular slice of bread versus a massive you know, French loaf of bread. So, you know, same, same thing with projectors. Your projector, no matter what, is outputting a certain amount of light, but that light is going to be spread thinner on a 150-inch sc screen than it is on a 120-inch 120 inch screen. And those numbers are deceptive because 150-inch screen, it's actually 56% larger in surface area than 120 inches. So the light is being spread over a much larger surface and as a result, you're getting a much dimmer image. So the calculation for this, as you can see on the screen, it, to get like the actual amount of light output that you're getting on the screen from your projector is lumens equals nits times surface area times pi. So we want to rearrange that equation a bit to actually get to nits, uh, which is going to be the amount of light that ends up on the screen. So that's lumens divided by, you know, screen area times pi. Uh, and, uh, you know, essentially like screen area, there's plenty of calculators online. You can just search Google for, you know, 
a TV surface area calculator, a projector screen surface area calculator, and it'll essentially get you to like you know the basic calculation of you know how many uh, cubic meters or sorry square meters your projector screen is. Which for the purposes of this equation, you want to use square meters. You don't want to use square feet. And then pi is pi, obviously, and then lumens. We just showed you a moment ago. You find a review on your projector, find its actual lumen output, and use that in the calculation. And then nits and uh, foot lamberts, there's simple calculations you can find online for converting nits to foot lamberts. We can actually do this right now, actually. Let me just do that. So TV surface area calculator. So Omni Calculator is the site I use for this. So you can just do this right here. So 120 inch screen gives you square inches, what we want is square meters. It's 3.97 square meters. So basically 120 inch screen is four square meters. And as I said before, 150 inch screen is 6.2 square meters. So roughly 50% bigger than the 120 inch, 20 inch screen. And then nits, two foot Lamberts. This is also something that you can easily find a calculator online where it's like, okay, so 106 nits is 30.9, basically 31 foot Lamberts. So why is this important? Why do we care? Why do we want to calculate the number of foot Lamberts we have? Why we want this is because this will give us a guideline for, you know, how, what brightness we want to target. So for several decades now, the standard, you know, um, target for cinema in a dark room, you know, lights off, white screen, 1.0 gain is 16 foot Lamberts. That's the brightness we want to hit. And then for IMAX, you want it a bit brighter. You want 22 foot Lamberts. But with the introduction of HDR, you need more brightness headroom and Dolby Cinemas these days, the commercial ones, shoot for a target brightness of 31 foot Lamberts, which, you know, is something that I would ideally like to target in the home as well. Obviously, Dolby Cinemas, they have to light up a much bigger screen. Those projectors cost multiple millions of dollars. But in the home, you can do it for a much more reasonable price because you're on, quote unquote only doing a 120 inch screen or only doing 130 inches. You're not trying to light up a 50 foot screen. So the demands are a lot lower there. So 31 foot Lamberts, that's about 106 lumens. That's what I tried to target. Sorry, 100, 106 nits is what I want to target. So you take the nits, you take the screen size, you run it through this calculation to find the number of lumens that you want and then find a projector that's actually able to output that many lumens. And then obviously with the uh, one thing I didn't account for in this uh, calculation, you can see an example here, you know, 120 screen is four cubic, uh, sorry, four square meters. Multiply that by pi, multiply that by our knit target, and we want 1,324 lumens. And as you can see here, this projector easily meets that requirement. Although, as I said, like look up multiple reviews. This is the Projector Central review where it's around 1,400. And then projectorreviews.com puts it around 16 to 1,700. So the truth flies somewhere in that range. You can give them the benefit of the doubt. Like if someone reputable, reputable men measures it as being 1,700, you can count on it being 1700. Uh, and as I said before, um, you know, 150 inch screen is significantly larger. It requires over 2000 lumens as a result because it is 56% larger than 120 inch screen. That like 30 inches is not 30 inches. So you'll notice a massive difference in the screen size of 150 inches. Uh, so uh, the other uh, variable in here that I didn't include because it gets vastly more complicated is the type of screen you're using. We covered screen size, but then there's also screen gain. If you're just using a standard white screen, the vast majority of them are 1.0 gain. There's no other modifier you need to put on this. However, if you're using, for example, an ambient light rejecting screen, oftentimes those are 0.8 gain. And for those, what you want to do is you want to take this uh, lumen number you got, this 1324, and divide it by the gain, so by 0.8. So if you have a 0.8 screen, you take that 1324, divide it by 0, sorry, 0 0.8. And now you actually need a 1655 lumen screen. Or say you have a high grain screen, say you have a 1.3 gain screen, now you only need 1000 lumens versus you needed 1300 before. So the gain of the screen comes into play here. And then I'll have a whole other video on screens, but like short story is that, um, you know, the lower the screen gain, the less light it will reflect, the higher the screen gain, the more light it will reflect. But high grain screens, they also have their own technical issues. They don't have as good of, of viewing angles and cheaper ones can have hot spotting. So again, this a whole massive rabbit hole. This video is gonna be over an hour as it is. I can't get into projector screens here right now. So 
Final section, here we go. So what projector should I get? So if we're just talking about you're doing a dedicated home theater, you're doing a dedicated room for your home theater, you're gonna have light control. You don't need to do ambient light projecting or anything like that. You just wanna do a standard home theater projector. These are the projectors I'd recommend. So quite honestly, if you're under $2,000, the best value to be had is to buy a used projector. I know that that's not everyone's favorite, but I've found great success with this. You get much better bang for the buck. You can build a theater for, you know, overall budget of $5,000 that outdoes, you know, commercial theaters for the, you know, six people that are in the room, uh, four or $5,000. If you're willing to make some, you know, strategic moves with uh, purchasing online or purchasing in the used market, I mean. So the top projector I'd recommend for that is the Epson 5040 UB. It's a projector from 2016. I think it was discontinued in 2019. But people regularly sell this for $1,000 to $1,200 online. And the great thing about this is, so it's a, it's a 1080p projector. It does do pixel shifting to achieve a pseudo 4K image. Still plenty bright, plenty sharp. Uh, and the great thing about it is that it's a bulb-based projector. So when you get the projector, swap in a new bulb for about 100 to 120 bucks, and boom, it's uh, working like brand new. And quite frankly, in this $1,000 to $2,000 price range, all of the other alternatives are DLP projectors from either Optoma, BenQ, or LG that all use effectively the same uh, Texas Instruments DLP chip. And quite frankly, while those are decent projectors for their price, they cannot match the contrast and black levels of a used Epson LCD projector, specifically this model, the 5040UB. As I said, let's, uh, let's just check eBay real quick, see how much this projector has been selling for. So what we wanna do here is Epson 5040UB. And then we don't wanna see these bids or these ones that are selling for parts. What we wanna do is go down to, um, yeah, sold items and see what they've been selling for recently. So this one, this guy got a sweetheart deal. He Oh, this is part for parts actually, but you can see this one is a working one, sold for $1,000 on the dot. I was As I was saying, this one is for parts. This guy kind of got hosed. He bought it for two grand, but you can see 850, 1035. Yeah, so as as I said before, like it's realistic. You can get this projector for about $1,000. Maybe you want to pay a bit more if you're impatient, but you can find it for that. Like as I said, for used deals, for good deals, you got to be a bit patient, a bit uh, judicious about finding what you need. It's not just a turnkey solution. If you want a turnkey solution, then you are going to need to compromise on performance for price. This is what, just what I'm telling you. This is the best value. If you're willing to be patient and judicious, you'll really punch above your weight class with this projector for this price. So the next tier up in this is actually the replacement for the 5040, which is the 5050 UB, which is the best projector for $3,000, hands down in my opinion. Like nothing else really comes close, honestly, because they're all, again, in this price range, it's all just DLP projectors that use the same Texas Instruments chip, which is a good chip and good projector, but this is better. Uh, and again, so this is $3,000 brand new, uh, but oftentimes about once or twice a year, it will go on sale for about uh, $2,400, $2,500, or the refurbished models, Epson will often sell them for $2,200. Actually, currently, you can probably find it refurbished on Amazon for $2,300. So depending on whether you want it new or refurbished, and depending on whether you're willing to wait for a sale or not, or not you can get it for as cheap as $2,200, or as expensive as three grand if you're impatient and you want a brand new unit tomorrow. Just buy it for three grand. It's still the best option at that price. If you're willing to wait for a deal, you'll be able to get a deal. So that's really all I have to say about that. At $5,000, it gets a lot more interesting because now we get into two projectors that I love a lot, which is the Epson LS12000 and then the JVC MP5. Now, what you're getting with the Epson LS12000 versus the 5040 is you go from, you know, I guess a pseudo 4K image where it's like, uh, it's roughly half the resolution of 4K, but it's shifting in order to make it seem sharper than it is versus this projector is still using a 1080p chip but it's shifting it four times so that you get every single pixel of 4K on the screen. So you're gonna get a sharper, true 4K image, despite it being a 1080p chip. You're also gonna get, for gamers, which is important, is 120 hertz refresh rate. The 5050 is limited to 60 hertz refresh rate. And then the 5040, interestingly, it's either able to do 1080p 60 FPS or it can do 4K 30 FPS. It can't do 4K 60. If you want 4K 60, then you need to get the 5050. And if you want 4K 120, you want the LS 12,000. There is another model for $4,000 called the LS 1100. However, I don't like that for a couple of reasons. First, it's actually in many ways a worse projector than the 5050. It has worse contrast 
um, it doesn't actually achieve the black levels that the 50-50 does. It's kind of a step back in image quality. You're really only getting it. This is what I'm saying before. You're getting it for the laser, and laser doesn't automatically mean better. All it means is that it uses a laser light source. You're getting a worse image. You're getting higher refresh rates. So for a gamer, if you want that 120 hertz refresh rate, maybe that's worth considering. But honestly, at that point, you're spending $4,000. Like You're so close to spending $5,000 on the actual have it all superior projector it's like why are you trying to save that extra 20 percent? just just spend like if you're if you're someone who can afford a four thousand dollar projector you're just being a cheapskate if you're not buying a five thousand dollar projector and if a five thousand dollar projector is what makes you go broke you should not be buying any of this stuff you should be going on the used market and buying a one thousand dollar projector because if five thousand dollars is a struggle for you you should not be spending four thousand dollars that's quite honestly the reality of the situation that's just life advice it's not like technology advice uh, and then the other option here is the uh, JVC NP5. And I'm going to make it very simple for you, the rundown of who should get which, which one of these. I can, you know, if you want to get into all the technical details, read the reviews. But quite frankly, it breaks down to this for me. If you are a cinema purist, you want to use your home theater just to watch movies and you're a serious movie watcher, go for the JVC NP5 all day long. If, however, you use your, uh, your uh, home theater for mixed use, you know, sometimes you have some dim lights on. And then more importantly... If you're watching sports or if you're gaming, the motion on the Epson LS12000 is superior to the JVC. The JVC has better black levels and it has better color accuracy and color coverage to a certain degree, but it does like it is significantly worse in motion than the Epson. And ultimately, for the quality of image you're getting, like you're going to be splitting hairs when it comes to like the black levels and stuff. The motion is a very noticeable difference. Like the Epson hands down for if you're a gamer or if you're a sports watcher, the Epson will be very noticeably superior. If you're purely a movie watcher and want to get every last ounce of quality out of your movies, go with the JVC. Most mixed usage people should be going with the Epson though. And then in the price ranges of above it, it's not super interesting. Basically, you're just going JVC all the way down. The JVC NC7, NC8, or NC9 depends on just what price you're paying. Um, you know, the higher-end projectors, basically with the NC8 and NC9, you're paying for more brightness, and you're paying for uh, better um, better black levels. And unfortunately, the NC7, uh, uh, it's a, the lowest end of JVC's laser projectors. This gets into the whole like laser as marketing term issue again. I've actually found the NC7 to have slightly worse black levels in contrast than the NP5. So I even hesitate to recommend this. I would recommend most people, if you're a cinema purist, either go with the NP5 or go be prepared to go all the way to the NC8. Um, and that's not a big, that's not a small gap. That's a $9,000 gap. So you really need to un determine how important getting that last bit of quality out is for you or whether you just want to spend five grand on the NP5 now and then in another five years, spend another five grand on a new projector then. And the MP5 has a replaceable bulb, whereas these uh, laser projectors, uh, as I mentioned before, lasers can be fantastic in that you don't need to worry about replacing a bulb. Downside, of course, is that you uh, can't replace a bulb. So <laughs> that same pro can be a con. So depending on how you look at it, you know, that's just the issue with the situation there. All right. So those were these were all just the mainstream projectors I'd recommend if you're just doing a dedicated enclosed room. We're just going to go over real quick some special use cases here. So as I said before, for under two thousand dollars, I personally think the best uh, the best solution is to buy a used projector. But if you absolutely must buy a new projector under two grand, these are the two recommendations I'd make. You know, fifteen hundred dollars, the BenQ TK seven hundred STI. Pretty decent projector for that price, honestly. As I said, I prefer uh, Epson's LCD technology, better contrast, better black levels, better image overall. But if you have to go with a new projector under this price range, really, um, it's going to be a DLP projector. Like There aren't very many great LCD projectors under two grand. Um, I'm honestly not a fan of a lot of Epson's ultra-budget models, so that kind of leaves you with a DLP projector. And out of the DLP projectors, I've consistently found that BenQ, like, even though they're all using the same Texas Instruments chip, BenQ tends to do a better job with the color accuracy, with the basically the projector technology they're building out across around that core DLP chip than uh, Optoma and LG have done in the past. So the TK700 STI, fantastic projector for that price. Similarly, if you're in ultra budget territory, again, used is probably the way to go, but say you do need to absolutely must get a projector under $600, the BenQ TH575, it'll produce a very big image for pretty cheap. That's the best thing I have to say about that. Honestly, um, 
uh, while I hesitate to recommend this projector, it is still going to be he heads and tails way better than all of the no-name Chinese projectors on Amazon. So it's just the reality of the situation. This is superior to those. Aside from that, I just wouldn't recommend cheaping out this much on a projector. Similarly, in the, so what I mentioned before with the uh, short throw category, I don't recommend ultra short throw, but in the right circumstance, I recommend this in-between category of short throw. So if you want a short throw projector, a couple options here, same one as before, the TK700 STI that I recommended up here. This is short throw insofar as its throw ratio is 0.9. So what that essentially means is that if you want to create a 100 inch image, the projector only needs to be 90 inches away. So it's still not quite short throw, but it's on the shorter end uh, end of a standard throw projector. For truly short throw, it would be the SpenQ model, the LH720ST, ST standing for short throw in this certain area, where it's a 0.5 uh, throw ratio, meaning for a 120 inch screen, your projector only needs to be 60 inches away, you know, 60 being half of 120. Uh, again, like this is if you specifically want a short throw projector like you know this is not super short throw but you know if you think that you can make this fit in your room where you know you have the space to put this you know 0.9 away from whatever your screen size is you know for example like a 150 inch screen 0.9 of that would be 120 inches away from the screen if you have the clearance for that like to be 10 feet away from a 150 inch screen this would be the way to go if you need to be even tighter than that then go with this so it's a 0.5 throw ratio and then the final interesting category is for super bright rooms or for massive images, uh, they are venue projectors. So this is the Epson Powerlight LU7, sorry, sorry, <laughs> the Powerlight L775U, $4,500, but you get 7,000 lumens for this, whereas something in that same price range, the Epson LS12000, this is only 2,700 lumens, you get like basically triple the lumen output with this projector, nearly triple, uh, for $4,500. Of course, it's not going to be, you know, as color accurate as, you know, a, a home theater projector like these, you know, large venue projectors are really intended for light output above everything else. They're not getting peak image quality, but you're able to fight that just from sheer image brightness. So if you have a room with a ton of lights, this is going to straight up look like a TV. Uh, it's not going to look like a dim, washed-out projector, especially if you pair this with a gray slate screen. You know, those are usually around 0.8 uh, gain, so you lose some brightness from that. But what you get is the contrast boost, so overall image boost. And this has the headroom for it, so this is a 7,000 lumen output projector. In real-world scenarios, for color accuracy sake, it'll be around like 5,500 lumens in actual output. But there's still plenty of lumen output to use with a big screen in a bright room and get a decent image. So that's uh, one path to take if you're not uber serious about getting peak image quality home theater you more care about just having a projector that's usable in a you know bright room so that's all there is for uh, my recommendations as i said anything from this screen i stand by it 100 percent at these price points these are the projectors to get and then these are more like edge case scenarios which realistically for any one of these i think i'd honestly prefer to get a tv instead but those options are available for, available for you if you feel that they're merited to you these are what i would recommend in these use cases so uh next topic for the next video is projector screens i apologize for the length of this video there's just so much information to cover and there's not gonna be quite as much but there is a you know projector screens are in and of themselves their own you know rabbit hole as well so Hopefully I'll be getting that out within the next day or two. Thank you all if you've listened to the end. And if you found this uh, information useful, please uh, like and subscribe to the channel. And if you need any of my consulting services, uh, feel free to shoot me an email at the email in the de description below. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.